Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the Zen Master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno, Mike, how are you? Doing great. Thank you for asking. Good to see you. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson, without a big ribbit in his mouth. Eric, good to see you. Likewise, Mark. Happy to be here. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield, how are you? Doing really well, thanks. Um, be nice to look over your shoulder. Lots. Go to landgeek.com forward slash lots. Check out how Tate works. Last but not least, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm confused. Again? Well, you see, every time you do a podcast, you say www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm just wondering, like, do you have to do the www or can you just do landgeek.com? Hey, couldn't we just Google landgeek too? I mean, isn't there, I mean, shouldn't you just be saying HTTPS colon slash slash <laughs> www.thelandgeek.com? I'm great, Mark. How are you? Um, okay, so. Find me on the internet. How about you just say it, that? I do. I do think it's, it is a valid point. And I think this goes back to the power of habit because it was just, it's just a habit now. And I remember thinking I'm going to change this up, but I think there's something about the consistency of the same intro, pretty close to the same outro that the listeners find comforting, like a yeah. warm weighted blanket. Right. So I do it but, that way. But do you know Look, I don't want you to change it, but do you know why I did that? You know why I did that, Mark? Why? Because we get in we get into patterns. We get into our patterns and we just we just do things and we become like you said, becomes a habit, right? Like it's just mm -hmm. something that we do. And a lot of times I think that and and this is kind of our topic today, I believe, is really like we we get into these patterns to where we think some way or we think something, yet we don't necessarily change things in order to try new things and in marketing we see this a lot and like i think that's what our topic is today like what are some of the mistakes that we see in marketing? yeah that is the topic today and i think it'd be great to just start with the zen master mike zeno what are the biggest mistakes you see in in marketing i can imagine when you're on a co coaching or consulting call like you know and I'll just do it in a Boston accent because I just assume they always try to do that when they talk to you. Mike, my property's not selling. I'm wicked smart. I'm putting it out on Land Moto. How come no one's buying it, Mike? <laughs> well, oh my gosh. That was great. You're getting better. Uh, so, I, I, well, I'm going to, yes, I do run into that in the calls, but I'm going to go back to something that happens a lot of boot camp. Um, when we would do the uh, pricing, remember we would give them a property that they would buy and then they would work together to sell it. Inevitably it would be like, okay, the purchase price is like $2,000 or 3,000, but they'd be like, okay, we're gonna get $500 down. We're gonna have $500 a month. We're gonna have a $500 dock fee. And they, and they get all excited. Cause like, look at, we get all our money out in the first payment, in the first month. And they get all excited. And what they don't take into account is the reality of what's going on in the market, right? So they, it's their expectations of what should, what would be a great return, right? What what would, um, you know, what they want versus what will sell. So I think the biggest uh, benefit about, you know, we buy these properties 25 cents on the dollar, that's great. But the real reason they sell is because we give these crazy payments that people can't, they're like, what, $100 a month? What, $150, $200 a month? That's all, no credit check, that, that's crazy. And so it's like, how, how, how much can, how low can you make that, but still have a great return or a great yield or whatever metric you use. And that's what you got to look at. Not at like, Hey, let me just get it all out on the first payment. I mean, that does happen to all of us at times, but it's not, it's not the normal thing. I wouldn't say, right. I think that normally we're just, we're just plug and play. We have simple, a model of, we buy at one price. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we get a nice down payment. We get a nice dock fee and boom, we roll it. Uh, but, we don't expect to get it all at once. And I think that that could be something that hinders somebody in the beginning with marketing as their expectations. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I can imagine if you've been listening to the podcast, but you've never gone out 
and marketed your own property and you hear my voice saying, you know, 300 to a thousand percent returns and it's not moving. Well, is anyone going to get, you're going to get mad if it's 150% return, a 200% return, like something has to change to, to move that, that property. Um, Tay Litchfield, what, what are some of the biggest mistakes you see in, in, in your coaching clients when they're doing their marketing? Yeah. I mean, Mike talked about making it irresistible, right? You got to make these irresistible. I think the other one that he talked about was the numbers. It's the same reason your, your mailing doesn't work. Your numbers are wrong, right? If it's not selling, well, your numbers are wrong. The market's telling you that your numbers are wrong. The other thing that um, prevents people from having good success is just they think that one is going to be enough. Oh, I, I sent it out to my buyer's list one time and nobody wanted it. It's so like, what? Only once? Man, how many times did you have to, you know, go test drive a vehicle before you pulled the trigger and bought it? I'm guessing more than once, right? These things are expensive purchases for a lot of people. And most people need time to think on it. They want to talk it over. They want to make sure it's right for them, fits their needs. And so uh, the other reason property doesn't sell is you don't give the buyer you know, sufficient time to make that decision, right? You got to follow up with them. There is a little bit of stocking that goes into the process of sales. And um, that's, that's a big deal. So marketing can fail on a lot of different levels, but uh, if it's not irresistible and your numbers aren't right, you've just become a land collector. There you go. There you go. Uh, technician, Eric Peterson, what are some of the biggest mistakes you see your, your clients making on these coaching calls? I want to, I want to talk about um, the deal of the week for a minute. So uh, we talk about the power of the buyer's list and, um, you know, owning those email addresses. And I think that, um, you know, the mistakes I see in the deal of the week, uh, first and foremost, is your subject line or your headline of that deal. Um, if you're not being creative, if you're not interrupting the email box with something different, it's going to get ignored, you know, and if it gets ignored, that means it's not going to get opened and you've lost the chance to sell that property. So that's, that's the number one part of your deal of the week is having a very strong and powerful subject line. After that, you know, I mean, it's, it's all those common things we talk about in marketing, right? It's the urgency. So are you going to put a countdown timer? on your deal of the week? I certainly think you should, and you should probably have it on that page more than once. Um, you know, is the offer irresistible as everyone else was already talking about? So, you know, is that because it's a low down payment or you're cutting a dock fee or, or you're doing something to make it attractive? Are you anchoring it to something else, whether it's your previous pricing or something else out there on the market so that people can quickly see without having to do a ton of research, hey, this is a great deal. I better take action because that countdown timer is, is ticking away, right? Um, and another common thing I see is, you know, our students will just, they'll put just a single down payment button in that deal of the week. And I like to see it multiple places. If you think about, you know, uh, a landing page that's, that's maybe selling some kind of product, you're going to see that that purchase button like 10 times through the page as you're scrolling through. And I think we need to follow the same model in our deal of the week, especially if we're using landing pages. Um, so those are those are some of the common things that that I see in the deal of the week that uh, can get overlooked. Yeah, I mean, you really hit like all the salient points that I think all of us see as far as, you know, what makes marketing effective or what makes it ineffective you've got to have a, a really great headline there needs to be scarce, scarcity and like you said the deal of the week that that timer there needs to be urgency first come first served but you know we don't talk enough about that anchor you know showing them taking a screenshot of this is what other people are selling that property for or even just anchoring it from your own discount you know crossing a line out of it they can't unsee it uh, two of my favorite words in the market here, instant equity, instant equity. That's how good the deal is. Uh, that is, 
um, that you're getting. So all those points are, are really good. And, and the reason I am going on and on about this, Eric, is I literally think that you've left nothing else for Scott Todd to touch upon with mistakes in marketing. And the challenge now for Scott to try to formulate something is just going to be phenomenal for me. Scott Todd, do you I have mean, anything else to add? Do we have to add this. anything else? I mean, you know, like, can't, can't we just call it? We could, but, but I you know, but you know, in, in all seriousness though, like what you did bring up in the beginning, I think is really, really critical where you have to be flexible with your marketing. Like I can't rigidly think just cause I say www dot every single time that's going to be effective because if I look at my analytics on the podcast and see we're losing listeners, something has to change. The format has to change. Right. And so yeah. I, I do like that point of just flexibility with marketing. So I even took another one of your points. Now, what else do you have to add? Yeah. So like the, here's a, here's the thing is, um, a, as you're going through your, your marketing, one of the mistakes I think people make is that they, they think, okay, well, I have to do a deal of the week. Okay. Like we talk about the deal of the week all the time. There's nothing saying there can't be a deal of the day. Think about that one for a minute, right? Like we put these artificial uh, time horizons or these expectations and you might say, well, Scott, that's fantastic, man. The deal of the day, I have one property. How am I supposed to do this? I got two properties. How am I supposed to do this? Well, guess what? You see, the thing is, the reality is, is that you're making assumptions, just like Mark was making is making assumptions that everybody needs the WWW without any evidence of it. So essentially, you're making an assumption that people are reading your email and they're like virtually just hitting delete, delete, and then they're deleting it. And that that is not always the case, right? If you have a... Um, it's cool to me, like if you have a, um, uh, a an email service provider that allows you to look at the clicks, go back and look at how many times someone clicks on an email. Okay, like they might click on it five, six, seven, eight, nine times. Okay, so now let's tie in what Tate said, a little bit of stalking there. If you see someone that is clicking on an email five, six, seven, eight plus times, there's something there. They have some sort, it's not a fluke. So now could you email them directly and say, hey, I just wanted to send you a, a note. If you have questions about this property, call me or text me. Now you're stalking them in a way using the analytics and you're doing what Tate said, but now you're driving the conversation. Now you're pushing them a little bit. So you're using that piece. Let's also talk about go down the same path to deal the day or deal every other day, whatever it is. Just because you have the same property doesn't mean that you have to now give them, we're gonna tell Eric's thing with the, the, the countdown timer, right? There's nothing saying that the countdown timer has to be multiple days. It can be one day. It can be till midnight tonight. And then tomorrow, it's no doc fee. Tomorrow, the next day, it could be name your down payment. The next day, it could be name your total purchase price, name your terms, half doc fee. There's so many variations in there and again, if you're thinking this through, every time you're hitting them with that message, it should change. Okay, now let's go back to the subject line. Eric talked about the subject line. So what should change in the subject line? Well, who, who are you writing this ad to? Remember, there's four reasons why people buy land. Which of the four are you targeting right now? And then change it. Tomorrow, change it to the next group. Go after horseback riders. The next day, go after ATV riders. The next day, go after hunters someone that wants to build their dream property. You can rotate the message through the subject line to get a different deal of the week, a different deal of the day on the exact same property. And my favorite, just kind of clinching this, is Larry Overstreet. Larry Overstreet, when he started coaching, he's telling me, I got this one property and I don't know what to do with it. I'm like, have you sent to your, your list yet, your, your buyer's list? He's like, well, I got one guy on my buyer's list and you know, he's already seen the property. He wasn't interested in it. I'm like, send it anyway. He doesn't know he's the only one on the list. So he sends the, the deal of the week again. Guess what? They buy it. 
okay, they buy it. So all of a sudden, when you can create urgency or when you kind of admit, this deal might not have been there or what Mike said, I'm asking too much on the down payment or the total purchase price. Every day you can tweak something and you know you can do it in a way that you can change the down payment and still sell it for a good amount of money. Just tweak the down payment a little bit. If you need to, tweak the months. T tweak things every day to start tweaking if you want to do a deal of the day. How was that, Mark? Yeah, I, that was amazing. Um, that was amazing. And, and the thing I want to bring up as well is you know, you're not the market. And, you know, just to, to Mike's point, just because you might need cash doesn't mean that property is going to sell for cash. You've got to be flexibility, flexible. You've got to give the market what it wants and, and take all these things into account with your marketing and then have, you know, that Eric Peterson intensity. Think of yourself as like a, a little mini Geico. They're showing up all the time. 15 minutes can what? We can all finish that sentence because they show up so consistently and so creatively. We don't have to have a billion dollar marketing budget to do the same thing. To Scott Todd's point, you could email them three times a day. And when they're ready, you are there. The marketing needs to be consistent. It needs to be irresistible. You've got to be, you know, just showing up. What's that Groucho Marx quote? 80% of success is just showing up. Is that right? You've got to show up, but do it consistently. And if you're going to show up consistently, take a little bit of time and do it effectively. Have all those elements in your marketing that make it an effective ad, like what Eric talked about, a strong headline, a strong call to action, scarcity, urgency, put in those, those countdown timers. I know Tate said some very important things too. I just don't remember them because I'm getting old. So Tate, don't think I'm ignoring your points. <laughs> it's all right. Hey, it's okay. Hey, hey Mark, it's www.geico.com. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I think that was a really good topic. And so now we're at that point where we're going to ask Eric for the tip <laughs> of the week. But before we get that tip of the week, I just want to let the listeners know that today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing with someone who's done it thousands of times with Scott Todd. Go up there quickly, safely, efficiently, because once your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses, you're working because you want to, not because you have to solve not just your money problems in life solve your money and your time problems live intentionally live mindfully do the things you really want to do in life purposefully and let us help you do that and create that vehicle so you can move up maslow's hierarchy of needs into self-actualization the first most important step in doing this is just get on a call go to landgeek.com forward slash training thelandgeek.com forward slash training. And as I like to say, the f tuition isn't going to cost you anything for flight school. You're going to make it back 180 days less in cash or term sales guaranteed. Just show us your work. That's it. All right. Eric Peterson, what is your tip of the week? Mark, I, I think you're going to like this one. Now, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with land. However, I think that we have a, a nice holiday weekend coming up here, and it's likely that, that people might have some downtime. So with that in mind, on Audible today, Ready Player Two was released. So go grab it. Take a listen. If you haven't listened to Ready Player One, you got to start there. But um, yeah. There you go. That might be one of the best tips of the week of all time. Uh, I've got to give Scott Todd some credit. I think he's the one that introduced us to Ready Player One, which at that time was like the best book I had read in a long, long time. This is really exciting. What are the, what are the reviews, Eric? 
35. Uh, looks like there's only 34 ratings, four and a half out of five stars. Okay, that's solid. That's I started solid. listening this morning, so. How, how is it? It kind of picks up right where it left off. No so, way. Yeah. Wow. All right, that is that is a great tip of the week. Um, bull, I'm excited. That's, that's, talk about gratitude, right? So grateful, you know, amazing. What a time to live too. We can just listen to a podcast and like in a, a tap, download a book and listen to it, have somebody professionally even read it to you. It's amazing. What an amazing time to be alive. Anyways, I want to thank the listeners, remind them that the only way that Mike Zeno is going to continue coming on this podcast with his fake box Boston accent is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the $97 uh, wholetailing course, how to double your money in 30 days or less for free. Please do it. Plus, um, Mike can always use the ego boost as well. So it helps us. It just does. Right, Mike? Not going to disagree. I love All that. right. <laughs> Let, let's do this. One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. ring. And don't overeat on Thanksgiving. No. Thanksgiving is already, is already, by the time this comes out, we already had our Thanksgiving. True. So, man. I don't know what I have to do to get Tate to send me some fried turkey, but whatever it takes. Deep fried turkey. Deep man. fried turkey, man. Maybe you could Not just better. write it down to him, Tate. Uh, it's going to be good weather down there. But I don't know. Is Arizona all gross and infected right now? Aren't you guys surging? We're surging. Mm -hmm. We're definitely surging. So are we, but... Uh, if you ask nicely, I'll still bring you some. New right. slang word, your surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wouldn't have known what that meant a year ago. <laughs> surgeon. So, so, Mike, are you solid now on your computer purchase? Yeah, it's, well, sort of. So now my options are I go for the monitor and uh, plug in my portable surface, which I love. Um, or I go for the new, uh, uh, where is it? I have an M1, the M1 chip, which sounds kind of cool. Um, you know, I, I got some credible feedback prior to the recording, and uh, it was, yeah, it was some good group I, therapy on yeah. tech purchases. I liked it. I was really surprised to hear Scott endorse the M1 chip so highly. I mean, <laughs> you know, when he came out and said, it's a no-brainer, you need to buy that computer, I, I honestly, I was a little shocked, but hey, He's tired of throwing good money after bad. I'm sure he is I, back I, in the fold. I never said that. I never said what you're saying. What, yes, what is you your name? Did. Tate Giuliani? No way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. No, stop. Stop. All right. No way. No way. Okay. He was actually just being authentic. He was looking out for me. I could have went out and bought the service, but he was saying that, Mike, you should get, you know, they're probably going to have a new one soon. You're probably going to wait for that one. So he, I thought he was just being authentic myself. Mm. Yeah. And, and what I said was that I did like, and I do like the, the, uh, the MacBook air and pro. I like those. I like the chip. I like the reviews I've seen. However, what I said, I didn't say it was a no brainer. Never said that. Uh, what I, said was, I remember it. No, I have it on recording. Mark, See, I no, record don't. everything. Tate. I so don't, don't make me know. Release the recording and, like, <laughs> don't make me do that. Okay. I mean, whatever helps you sleep at night. Let, whatever helps you sleep at night. Okay. All right. I'm going to let you off the hook. Kinder, gentler Scott. But see, then what I said was, if your use case, you need a Mac, great. Use it. For me, the Mac does not work for what I need it. The Surface Studio is perfect, and I will continue down that. Uh, even though I tried, I tried to figure it out just because I'm always about the best technology. And let me just say something. This Surface Studio that I use has been rock solid for two years. And when the Surface Studio 3 comes out, I will get it. And I will take this beautiful device and move it over 
there uh, and force my wife to use it where she's, she works today on a, on a MacBook Pro. Does she want to use it? I mean, because she likes to touch the screen. Yeah, that is cool. It's all that, that, about yeah, it's... the right tool for the job. That's true. That's uh, all right. He's got a, he's got a point, Tate. We'll, we'll give it to him. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it's wow. Thanksgiving. We we'll just came. It. That's why I was saying it's mostly Thanksgiving because everybody just sort of just calmed down and gelled together and said, "Yeah, we all agree." You hear that? Yeah. That was pretty cool. I don't, I don't think I don't think Eric's agreeing. <laughs> but wait a minute now. Wait a second. Hold on. Now that I'm thinking about this. <laughs> Now that I'm thinking about this, one week later, Scott Bossman's not on this call, but he was supposed to send me a picture of Mike Zeno mocking me. Mocking what? me. How does this on, even come up right now? On a, uh, on a uh, uh, what is it? Oh, not oh. The, ho the Halloween nightcap. The that was Halloween nightcap. Isn't that the highest form of praise when you impersonate somebody? I don't think know. It's, I need to go back and watch this. I think it's then... been deleted from the archives by accident. Oh, it, it has not been deleted. No, I think we, we actually pushed that everything. thing up. I will. I will. Uh, I will go search that, and I will make my computer recommendation to Mike Zeno shortly. But what happened to kind, of gentle Scott? You just said that five minutes ago. And yeah, until I until like until I remembered what Boston said. Oh, I'm always catching the wrath. Blame Boffman, by the way. Such he he loves stirring that pot. Mark called him out on it too. Mark, I said, did. Call you stirring the pot. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, you guys have a great rest of your day. Um, and uh, by the time I see you next week, I personally am hoping that I'm unrecognizable, looking like Elvis right before he died. I'm gonna get like one of those big belt buckles. You know what I mean? I mean, just Tate's deep fried turkey. You know, I'm going to try to eat like two racks of ribs, get a little Eric Peterson in there. Uh, you know, some, some Thanksgiving kibbe for Zeno, something cheesy for Bossman, and for Scott Todd, you know, a Diet donut. Coke or a donut. It's simple. <laughs> okay. It's that, it's that easy. I, I see what we're doing here. Are you still doing that, by the way, Scott? Are you still doing the donut in the morning, or is it morphed to another treat? Every, or? No, no. Every morning, man. Every morning, I get my uh, my donut. Don't you want to, uh, you know, switch it up like the www? Don't you want to like have a cookie? No. It's no. always the same donut. Listen, See, this is why uh, Scott's successful. He's a man of routine. Routine, it's right? It's like consistent. He's going to mail every day. Doesn't matter what day of the week it is. Mark, there's no, no better feeling in the morning, like at night, going to bed, when you know that um, the the next morning you're going to be treated with a donut. Okay, like there's no better feeling than that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that 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 oh. is true. Wow. So we had a little pause there because Eric was kind enough to send Scott a screenshot of what that nightcap on Halloween Whoa. like. What is this, Eric Peterson? And now <laughs> we better end. We better end. <laughs> we better end before it gets ugly, and and the children can't listen to the podcast anymore. Eric Thanks, everybody. Peterson. Why? I had to go look I'm at Zeno. it. I hadn't seen it. Mike Why? Zeno has